Hello, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the Mortimer Brewster of board game review shows. There are 13 bodies buried in the cellar. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of killing people, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Raise Your Goblets from Cool Mini or Not. In Raise Your Goblets, from Cool Mini or Not, up to 12 players are going to participate in a feast, which, of course, is going to have some uh, wine, which may or may not be poison. Now, there are different ways to play this game, depending on the player count. If you've got, I think, one to three, or, or you know, three thereabouts, um, there's, there's kind of a certain way you have to play it. If you're playing with seven or more, there's a variation there. Now, I've only played the main game, which is about from four to, four to six, uh, I believe, roughly. Uh, but essentially, how the game works is you have a number of goblets, say six goblets in front of you, and you attach these uh, coasters with your colors there. You take a player screen that, of course, has your color on it, you put that in front of you, and you put your goblet in front of you in kind of the center of the table. Now, this is important. You don't want it to be too close because you can't look into the goblet. They're deep enough. That won't be a problem if you're, you've got it kind of centrally located in the center of the table. Players are also going to receive randomly a character card. These character cards have all sorts of abilities they can trigger at different times during the game. Now, players are also going to get a number of wine tokens. I believe they get three wine tokens, two poison tokens, and one antidote token they put behind their player screen. And then the kind of the, the uh, poison and the wine that's left, they're going to go ahead and put into the, uh, into the cups that exist out in front of everybody. Now, the wine tokens are red, the poison is black, and the antidote is white. There's also some, like some super poison and super antidote. I can't remember what they're what they're called in the game, but uh, they, they, they're like more powerful, like two times as powerful as the regular one, but there's only one of, of each of those kinds of uh, super uh, tokens here. Each player is also going to be dealt out a target card. Now you have your color, but you're going to be dealt out another player's color. You're going to put that in front of you so everybody knows who everybody else's target is in the game. Now at the beginning of the first round, um, before the course, uh, if, if a player has a card, a character ability that triggers before, they can play that then. Otherwise, you move right into the game. Now, you have the character designated the host. He's kind of the first player. And the host is going to go first. You're going to go clockwise off of him or her. The game takes place over the course of three different rounds. Now, you're going to go ahead and begin taking turns, beginning with the uh, first player. And on your turn, you can take uh, two actions generally, though there is one action you can only take once. You can take any combination of the following. You can peek into the goblet in, that is in front of you. You can see what is in it. Uh, you can go ahead and you can pour, meaning you can put one of your tokens, any one of your tokens, wine, antidote, poison, into any one of the goblets that you choose. You want to be kind of secretive in how you do that. That is to say, you don't want anybody else to know which item you're pouring. There's, they can see you pouring, and they can see you pouring into which cup, but they won't know which item you're pouring. Next, uh, you can essentially rotate one way or the other, the, all of the goblets, or you can switch any two goblets. Or, of course, you can pass. You don't have to take any actions at all. You can do any combinations of those two, or you can go ahead and you can toast. Now, in order to take a toast, that's the only action you can take, and you can only do that after all of your wine tokens have been poured. So after you no longer have your three wine tokens, then you can call for a toast. Now, if you call for a toast, that's kind of end of the round, and then beginning with a player to your left, that player can take one action, every other player can take one action, when it gets back to you, you take your one action, and then you begin to see what everybody drank. You go ahead and uh, you take the goblet in front of you, one at a time, and you pour it out. Now, you want to have ideally no poison, but if you do have poison, you have to have a corresponding number of antidote uh, tokens in there in order to survive which is probably most of the time not going to happen uh, for everybody. It may happen for a few people here and there. But essentially, uh, if you drink more poison than you drink antidotes, guess what? You are dead. If, on the other hand, you have an equal number or greater number of antidotes, you have survived. If you survive, you get one token. If you succeed in killing your uh, enemy, your target, you get one victory point token. If, however, you survive and you kill your target, you get another victory point token. And then if you have the most red wine tokens, you get another victory point token. So it's possible to get four victory tokens per round. So you do this, you continue to do it, 
three twice more, so you do a total of three rounds. And then, of course, you're looking at your character cards. You're playing them at the appropriate times to give you the special abilities. Some will have them before you drink. Some will have them on you know during your turn. Uh, some have them before. So there's there's all sorts of different ways and times that these things will trigger. Then, of course, uh, once everybody has uh, gone done the toast the third time, you've drunk, you've seen what you, you have drunk your wine, you've seen what everybody has got. Then, of course, whoever has the most victory points wins. Raise your goblets. Raise your goblets is uh, kind of a social deduction game. It's a social deduction game, um, you know, with shades of the resistance and uh, uh, spyfall and some of these other kinds of, of games in that vein. But of course, it's very different, and it's very much its own game. It's a little, you know, you know, artwork's a little kind of cartoony. Um, the the themes a little lighter, and of course, it's not a very long game at all. Um, you know, forty five minutes, an hour tops, if that. So it's 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 pretty quick once you once you get the game down, and it doesn't take very long to learn either. Um, it's it's a game that, of course, really depends on you paying attention. If you're distracted if you're on your phone you're, you're, you're looking away you're not really going to follow it and your course you're trying to to you're trying to make it so that at least one of those goblets out there has enough antidote that you can try to maneuver it to you to win and you want to make sure at least one of them has a lot of poison that you can try to maneuver toward your enemy the problem is everybody else is doing the same thing with different goblets so you never can can, can be 100 percent sure that the one you're trying to game is really going to be a safe one or, or a deadly one so there's that aspect to it here. It's really kind of a, a guessing game. What is everybody trying to do, and is are people really going to accomplish, uh, you know, what what they're what they're trying to do, which is your objective as well: survive and kill the the target. Um, I'm a big fan of social deduction games. I, I really enjoy social deduction games. Uh, 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 Resistance, Resistance Avalon, probably my favorites. Um, uh, but I, I really like a lot of them uh, that I've played. I, they're fun. I love hidden traitor games. Battlestar Galactica is my number uh, uh, two game of all time. I, I love that mechanic in games. So I was very intrigued with Razor Goblets, and I've actually had this one on my shelf for a while, and I just haven't had a chance to get around to it for various reasons. But I finally got it to the table. And, um, you know, it took a little kind of... I don't want to say it took too long to learn, but kind of, I guess, getting into the spirit of the game, uh, for me and my group, took, took a little while. We kind of didn't know what to expect, because it doesn't look like a conventional... Uh, you know, hidden traitor or, 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 or you know, a secret identity game. Um, uh, it, it didn't. Uh, I, I, what's conventional though, right? So it, it just kind of. I was a little. Um, I guess it, it took me a little while to get into this game. Uh, once I did, however, I, it, it's really a lot of fun. It's it, it's it's a game. It's it's a little thrilling. It's a little scary. It, it's not as um, there's not as there's much deduction here. Uh, in the traditional sense of an Avalon, because you know who everybody's trying to kill, and it's really just a matter of more almost, I don't want to say mathy, but almost kind of just keeping track of the goblets and, and trying to guess what people are doing. So there is that element there, and it is a social deduction game. But it, it, at the same time, it's, it's, it's um, a little, little, it seems like a little more of a party game than, than say, something like Resistance Avalon. Still, I really enjoyed this game. If you're looking for, you know, if you like social deduction games, you're looking for like a, like a light opener for game night, uh, something along those lines. I think you'll enjoy this. I think it hits the spot. There's, there's, again, it's a game of personalities, and that's what I love about social deduction games is personalities. You're trying to guess what the other guy's doing, and the bluffing and the counter bluffing. It, 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 it's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy Raise Your Goblets. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna say buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you can play Razor Goblets, but just be sure not to get hit with a GUI. Gaming under the influence. Oh, I don't care. If you want to drink, drink. Please somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going And I don't know where I've been Please somebody help me on the solid ground It's a long time and I'll be dying Once a year I wind up in the band
here's the hero shot. 